Good evening, everybody. So, um, the last video I made was about making nickel nitrate, and uh, I showed how to make a complex with that uh, really beautiful uh, nickel 2 complex, which was nickel hydrazine nitrate. And I had uh, promised that I would uh, do a demonstration on at least the energetic properties of the uh, nickel hydrazine nitrate and uh, it was not dry when I was done with the video so I was unable to do so uh, and uh, now it's dry so uh, first off I will demonstrate uh, the energetic properties of the nickel hydrazine nitrate uh, which is uh, what this right here is this is uh, what do we have here? What does it say? One, so that's 1.32 grams of nihydrazine nitrate. And so I'll test that. And I'm going to show you how to make another energetic and beautiful complex with nickel. This is what the final product will look like. And we're going to use this for our proof test because uh, I'm going to have the same problem again that at the end of this video uh, we're still going to have wet product and uh, since this is already dry we're going to go ahead and use this to test and you can just see how gorgeous this is camera does not do it justice it shimmers a lot more um, you know to the naked eye so there's our, our test samples there and so what that complex is that purple complex I just showed you it's actual nickel hexamine perchlorate, and I have three quarters of a gram right there. All right, so what we're looking at here, you can see that pink pile, lavender pile, whatever you want to call it. That is exactly one tenth of a gram of nickel hydrazine nitrate. So, here comes the test. Get the lighter going. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how this reacts, and I'm not going to put the flame to it. I am going to just put heat from the bottom. And this is, uh, this stuff is so fluffy that one tenth of a gram of this, um, you probably can't really tell from the, the camera, but that's a good sized pile. Um, so, uh, this is, this is going to be a nice reaction, so. Here we go. Okay. And again, that's just with me heating the bottom. And you saw how quickly it just zoof, flashed. Um, any of that staining that is on this little piece of metal here, this lid, that is not from the nickel hydrazine complex that we just ignited. Uh, it burns away completely clean, no carbon or anything, and it reacts so quickly. Uh, you can only imagine uh, what this would do if you would encapsulate it. Uh, and again, that was a tenth of a gram, so that's 0.1 grams. And that was actually a good bit you could have done this demonstration or I could have I should say easily with uh, a few milligrams uh, my scale only goes to hundreds of a gram uh, and uh, I wanted to give a good demonstration because I promised you guys this a video ago and didn't deliver so we made this now you see what it can do um, I guess, uh, yeah, probably, I'll, I'll show a, a shock test here. All right, there I've got, see my little anvil, and there is a pile of our nickel hydrazine nitrate. That is exactly five hundredths of a gram this time. And I'm going to whack it with a sledgehammer, and we're going to test the uh, friction and shock sensitivity of this. So, I'm going to start here. I am roughly three to four inches high. Nothing. There it goes. 
So, that is a two pound sledge, and I was, I started at four inches high, and I didn't get any detonation until I was roughly between six and eight inches. So, it is shock sensitive uh, to a degree, however, um, for uh, intents and purposes as a primary uh, explosive, it is uh, considered to be pretty stable um, and as far as uh, the uh, uh, the way that they're categorized as far as stability um, usually uh, kind of um, uh, the paradigm is PETN or penta erythritol tetranitrate and so basically if something is less shock sensitive than the PETN um, it is considered to be relatively stable as far as explosives go so uh, that's it for uh, testing our complex that we made last week let's move on to uh, synthesizing this beautiful purple nickel complex so here is everything that we need as far as materials and reagents to make our nickel hexamine perchlorate. Uh, first things first though, need to get our gloves on because we are dealing with uh, nickel salts here and nickel two salts are highly toxic and they're also pretty carcinogenic so not something that we want to mess with and it will absorb through the skin so it takes a second to put gloves on people uh, make sure you do when you are running this synthesis please uh, anyhow uh, so let's uh, see what we have here so we've got a beaker and a little piece of saran wrap just loosely over top of it we have our magnetic stir bar not crucial you can you know, manually stir it, of course. However, uh, magnetic stirring is far superior always, but in this sense, uh, because we want to keep the saran wrap on our solution uh, as it's going to be hot, and we want to keep the ammonia from evaporating off. Um, and so uh, if you're trying to stir it manually, uh, you can't have the saran wrap on top of it if you're trying to use a stir bar. The only way would be if you, uh, you know, put the saran wrap over top and then just kind of swirled the beaker around while it was on the hot plate. Anyhow, uh, so here we have 20 milliliters of ammonium hydroxide and that is roughly 25% uh, by volume. This uh, beautiful green stuff is what we have here. This is nickel chloride. And I, uh, I'm fully aware I did not show you guys how to make nickel chloride. Um, I will go over that briefly here in a second. It is a very simple uh, synthesis to do. Uh, and uh, you can substitute the nickel nitrate that we did make uh, previously. Uh, and that will work in the synthesis as well. Uh, I have only done this a couple times. And... Uh, well, a few times, I should say, to be specific, three, done it thrice. And uh, the first time, I used the nitrate salt, and the last two times, I used the chloride variety. And I seem to get a better yield with the chloride. I think it's probably because the solubility might be a little different, and also, I think kind of because we have the common ion effect going on, because we've got chlorides in uh, all three of our solid reagents here. The only thing lacking it is the ammonium until we chlorinate it. So, moving on, uh, this here, this yellow looking stuff is this right here. This is ammonium chloride and it should be white. However, um, this is ammonium chloride that I made and uh, the only reason, it was white when I made it, um, this has been sitting on the shelf I'd say about two years um, and 
Uh, so when I pulled it out to use it, it had this yellow cast to it. And I think when I uh, synthesized it, I didn't use distilled water. Uh, and also, it's just been in the container that you see there with the little flip-top lid, not completely airtight or anything. So uh, it's probably oxidized a little bit too. Um, that will not affect the synthesis at all, though. So, uh, if you guys have uh, ammonium chloride and it's got a little bit of a yellow cast to it, don't throw it away. It's still perfectly good. Um, anybody would like to see how to make ammonium chloride, uh, I will show you how to do that. However, I'm not going to get into that, uh, particular synthesis right now. Uh, I'll show you how to do the nickel chloride briefly, uh, because uh, we are talking about nickel complexes here. Um, but uh, the ammonium chloride is a simple synthesis, and it can be bought at pretty much any hardware store. It, it's um, sold as, uh, I believe it's a fungicide um, a mold killer. So uh, if you don't want to make it, there you go. Uh, get it there. And uh, finally, and this is the... Uh, Pièce de Résistance, um, this white powder, this is what gives us the energy here, it's a heavy oxidizer, and this is ammonium perchlorate, as you can see, uh, doesn't matter that this is a 200 uh, micrometer mesh, um, in this instance it doesn't matter, because we're not doing dry pyrotechnics or anything, so that's just what I have. So let's uh, get on to actually uh, whipping this stuff up here. All right, uh, let's go see if we can get a better angle. There we go. That's better. All right, so the first things first. We are going to put in our ammonia solution. And once that gets in, we want to turn on our heat on uh, medium-low. The temperature that we are shooting for here is uh, between 50 and 60 C. And we just want to hold it there for 5 or 10 minutes at the most. Um, so uh, we get the ammonia in. We got that done. Next thing we put in is the green stuff. And, uh, you know, I should probably actually start the stirring before I add this. That would be wise. There we go. And in goes that. And this will dissolve pretty readily. I mean, it might take a moment or two. As we start to heat this, it will go into solution very readily. And you can see it already has. That goes right there. And you can see the color change immediately from green to a very beautiful blue color. And uh, I believe what this is at this point is uh, it is uh, nickel tetramine. There might have formed a little tiny bit of nickel hydroxide in there too, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it followed the path to uh, turn mostly into the tetramine nickel. And that's where we get our blue color from. So now that that is in, uh, what we want to do is we want to add our uh, ammonium chloride. Oh, and by the way, I think I forgot to tell you the, the amounts. Everything is written here, so you can see. If it'll focus there. Those are the stoichiometric amounts that I have figured. Um, and I've tweaked this just a little bit from the first time that I've done it. And uh, I just have tweaked it pretty much uh, with the um, perchlorate, um, figuring out the amount that gives it the uh, energeticness, if that's a word, I guess, uh, that I desired. So, um, yeah, as stoichiometric as you can be for something that I just whipped up out of my head. So, anyhow, those are the amounts. Next thing to go in is going to be our ammonium chloride. So we're going to put this in. 
and this is highly soluble in water and in ammonium hydroxide as well so we shouldn't have any issue getting that to go so I'm going to turn up the stirring and for a minute or so until our ammonium chloride clumps break up we're just going to allow uh, those three reagents to get acquainted and start heating it gently uh, like I said we got the heat turned on and uh, we'll come back to it here in a few minutes all right so I put a little piece of foil around here and all that's doing is that's just insulating everything so that I don't have to heat it as heavily and I can keep it at the temperature that I wanted to keep it at um, so now the last thing we got to do is add in our AP and put that in now and once we get this in we are going to allow it to just gently heat again not allowing it to get above 50 to 60 C at the most and uh, let everything react and we're going to leave that on for about 10 minutes at the most and at that point everything should be reacted and done so now that everything is in there we can go ahead and seal up our top semi-permanently we don't want to put a band on there or anything because we want gases to be able to escape if they're going to evolve which they may because ammonia likes to uh, turn into uh, gas very readily and it's not at a very high temp either okay so I said I would show you how to make nickel chloride and while we are waiting for everything to react I can show you uh, the formula at least the ratios for how I made it so this is it here there you go uh, so you can see here that's nickel and that's just solid elemental nickel eight and three quarter grams hydrogen peroxide 30 percent 75 milliliters you can use three percent obviously but you're gonna have to use a ton more um, have to have the hydrogen peroxide here because nickel uh, is very similar to copper uh, in as much as it is uh, uh, pretty hard to oxidize it's actually harder to oxidize than copper is um, and so the ACL will not react directly with the nickel um, it just passivates and nothing happens so what we have to do is we have to take our elemental nickel and we have to oxidize it so we're turning it into nickel oxide nickel 2 oxide to be specific and then once the nickel is oxidized then our hydrochloric acid will attack it turning it into nickel chloride and then you see here the last thing you need is the HCl and 31 and percent roughly is what I used uh, which is muriatic acid hardware store variety 85 mils of that and so it is basically the same as making copper chloride um, making some uh, metal sulfates that you have to oxidize first so you, you just weigh out all of your reactants you add the nickel to whatever vessel you're going to be making it in um, and so the the 75 mils that is a total amount used and so is the 85 mils so what you want to do is you want to start out with um, roughly uh, I would say 25 mils of the HCl and 15 or 20 mils of the peroxide <clears throat> and the reason you don't want to add it all at once is because um, it if you do it won't have a chance to react before it starts to evaporate off um, because you're going to be heating this while you're doing it so you have to add it in portions um, so again these are the, the total amounts that I used so you put your nickel in uh, add some H2O2 hydrogen peroxide and then uh, add a, roughly the same uh, 
amount, milliliter for milliliter, that you add of peroxide, add in the hydrochloric acid. So if you use 20 milliliters of peroxide, 20 milliliters of hydrochloric acid goes in. Um, and swirl it around a little bit and basically heat it up. Um, if you can't set up for reflux, like if you need to do it out of a beaker, um, put a, uh, a piece of saran wrap will do. However, if you have a round bottom flask that you can fill with ice water and set that atop, that'll work better because it will actually, instead of just impeding the um, uh, water vapor from escaping, it'll actually help it reflux with that cold, uh, it's kind of like a cold finger on top. Uh, is what it acts like um, and so you won't lose uh, as much uh, hydrochloric acid uh, so ideally you want to heat it and let it reflux and you just let it go it it takes hours and hours um, it's not a fast process um, however it, it's simple to see the end point though you just react it until the metal is gone or until the solution is a color that you feel is uh, saturated enough and then you just remove whatever metal is unreacted by filtering you know no big deal so that's how you make nickel chloride so let's get back to our feature presentation and let's see how this is doing here all right it, it looks beautiful to me it looks pretty much like we've got it all reacted peel that guy off of there so that we can a look at it and let me pull our stir bar up out Let's get it up out of the way there all right so as you can see there's a little bit ah now you can see see there's a little bit of undissolved powder in there yet actually oh Sorry guys, actually there's a good bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more um, uh, ammonium hydroxide to this. And I'm thinking the reason this did not happen any other time and I'm fresh out of my uh, good concentrated ammonium hydroxide. So I had about 17 milliliters of 25% and then the other three or four milliliters were actually 10%. So I think that's what's going on is that um, it's just not quite enough of the solution for it to react enough ammonia in solution, uh, I meant to say. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that and let this heat up and stir for a little while longer until this all uh, goes into solution, and then I'll come back. All right, so here's our solution now. You can see down here on the bottom, we still have a tiny little bit of undissolved stuff. And that's no big deal. That's just a little bit of unreacted ammonium uh, perchlorate. And uh, I've never had that happen before. And again, that's because uh, I had to cut this with the stupid 10% uh, uh, store grade, cleaning grade ammonium hydroxide. And so it just did not have enough uh, ammonium to attach to, so it couldn't react. Uh, again, uh, no problem though. We'll just filter that out, quick gravity filter, and uh, we can actually rinse that and uh, save it and use it again for another synthesis. Um, so nothing's lost here. So I'm going to set up for a uh, gravity filter, and I'll be back. solution too much. Uh, 
there. Now the solution that we got coming out in the bottom is just a crystal clear and beautiful color. See if we can get a good close up on that. Yeah, there's what our solution looks like now. It was very, very cloudy, and now we've got this nice, crystal clear blue solution, almost reminiscent of a solution of copper sulfate. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that finish filtering. See, we've got that much left to go, and uh, then the next thing we need to do is just pop this in the fridge or an ice bath uh, for a little while. Um, I usually just do it overnight, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put this in there overnight, let it crystallize out. And um, so I have not uh, even tried to recrystallize this yet. I, my tests that I've done on the batches I've made have been straight from the crude product from the direct synthesis. Uh, which is what we will obtain out of our solution here. Um, and so, uh, I, th just so you know, th what I'm going to demonstrate, the product I'm demonstrating, is only been crystallized. It has not been recrist. So, uh, I'm sure that if it's been recrystallized, it will react even more uh, spryly. So, um, let's, uh, while this is going, I guess we can move on to the testing phase. Here we are back at my anvil. You're looking at one-tenth of a gram of the nickel hexamine perchlorate complex. And let's go and try and see what it does here. Oh my god, that was loud. Okay, so... Wow. The hydrazine nitrate, it popped. And it was pretty much like a piece of nitrocellulose popping when you hit it. This uh, actually just sounded like a 22 going off. My ears are ringing right now. Um... <laughs> Probably should have put on ear protection. Never done the uh, friction test uh, inside, impact test inside. Always done it outside before. Uh, yeah, so um, note to all of those that may try this. Definitely wear ear protection and do it outside. And uh, as you can see, I've still got a little bit of material on the anvil there. And... You see there, I got some on there. And you know what? I'm going to let that on there, and I'm going to scrape it off, and I will burn that because uh, I don't want to damage my hearing any more tonight than I just did. So, uh, yeah. So, this complex that I have made is obviously pretty highly uh, shock sensitive. And so I would actually rate this right up there with, uh, wow, I, I, don't, I don't even know. This is right around the sensitivity of an azide, like lead azide or something. Uh, yeah, pretty insane. Okay, so let's move on to a burn test. Okay, here is one-tenth of a gram. Nickel hexamine perchlorate. Indirect heating. Let's heat it from the top now. So, I would say, in my opinion, this is definitely a lot more impressive as a uh, shock sensitive explosive 